Greetings sailors and welcome to a first look at the second Royal Navy premium carrier being added to the game, HMS Indomitable. Now this was of a different class of ships than Implacable, so even though the names are somewhat similar, they are, well, different enough to be different classes, that was coherent, but my point is that if you're expecting this to be a premium implacable, it really isn't. And overall the biggest change is the plane loadout. You don't have torpedo bombers, you've only got rocket planes and dive bombers. The dive bombers are the same carpet bomb style bombers that you find on other Royal Navy carriers. And lastly, the groups are very small. You get six planes in your attack squadrons and four planes in your dive bomber squadrons. Now there are some offsets to this, some. The planes have a very good amount of health, in fact I think the best health for the tier. And also they have pretty good speed as well. One thing to note, by the way, talking about hit points, and I should mention this right now, is that the numbers you're seeing on screen are with the benefit of survivability expert which nowadays actually can boost your planes hit points as well which you really will need on this carrier just because you have so few planes so in theory this is a carrier that heavily relies on both direct damage done and fires because you don't get that heavy damage that you're able to do the unrecoverable damage that you can do from uh, torpedo bombers and of course you can't get flooding as well although arguably flooding is you know less important to a carrier these days because however you are so dependent on getting decent amounts of fires this makes it one of the carriers most dependent on RNG in this game I'm going to get an okay amount, but I wasn't purposefully going out of my way to try and stack fires against single targets. There's one or two ships I could have focused on more, but I was trying to help the team out at various points. And there's usually that tension when you're playing a carrier of helping your own score and helping the team. Because if you spend all your time spotting and not doing any damage, then you're going to get a terrible score, but maybe it helps the team win. But on the other hand, if you're completely selfish and just go for damage against ships that were going to die anyway, at that point you're really not helping anybody. And that's uh, very much apparent in, in this ship because um, even just going for attacks against uh, relatively lone targets is quite tough. So I actually, I've, I think I've spent more time doing team spotting and trying to go for the um, the lower value targets as it were uh, from my point of view than actually uh, looking out for my own damage. Another big part of that though is also the fact that you get so few planes. This is one of the big issues. This is one of the things that makes this ship not very fun to play and honestly I think weaker than the Graf Zeppelin. I think this is the weakest of the tier 8 premium carriers, without a doubt, as it is at the moment. And it's just the fact that, well, yeah, your planes are in theory better, but especially in tier 10 games like this one, the extra hit points doesn't really matter. Especially against blobs of AA, there is only so much that you can do, and so you are really forced probably far more so than any of the other tier 8 carriers if you're trying to go for damage to pick on the stragglers. You also are forced, and you've been watching me do this the entire time, to be really careful about conserving your planes and especially with the dive bombers that means you're going to get most of the time only a single strike every time you're putting your planes up. Because otherwise you're going to run out of planes quickly. This isn't Kaga. You don't get a huge amount of reserve planes. You have to really be careful about making those safety drops or whatever it is that people call them. 
This, of course, is a huge limiter on your damage. I mean, your damage is already limited by the fact that you have these small squad, uh, squadrons, and they're even more limited than you think, just because you have to make these drops. It's not so bad in top-tier games. In top-tier games, it's semi-tolerable. In, in bottom-tier games... Yeah, you have to be careful. This is a harder ship to play than Saipan, I would say. Saipan already has a reputation as being one of the less noob-friendly tier 8 uh, 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 premium carriers. <laughs> yeah, that RNG there, though. <laughs> they all mostly lined up nice apart from, you know, that one, and it was the one that hit and the rest all went slightly over, but never mind. So, uh, it's, it's the planes. It's the plane loadout that absolutely makes this uh, not a fun ship to play. It, it's the number of planes, and also you'll have noticed, that despite their speeds, despite their high hit points, they do not turn particularly tightly. And so it makes sometimes going around for those second passes really quite difficult. Now I'm not doing the safety drop all the time. I'm, we're now in a situation where this Musashi is alone and there's a very good chance I can get a second drop on them. Although the second drop will be only with one plane. There's no way I'm not losing at least one plane, even to the Musashi's AA. But if I'm lucky, I can get another fire going on them. And the fire chance on the bombs is not bad. If I was using a test captain, I would have been trying this with Demo Expert as well, which gives you an extra 5% fire chance on the bombs. And it would go from, I think, 27% to, what would that be, 32%, so that's a pretty decent increase. But it was my 19-point existing implacable captain that I couldn't use the test captain with this ship. Because it was basically a, a finalised premium at the point where we were giving it to uh, uh, have another go with. And so, although that certainly would help matters, it, and it probably would increase your overall damage output it, it then becomes a choice of well what other skill do you sacrifice to actually help uh, you know potentially give that extra damage because you can either give up your survivability expert of those three point skills which is not at all recommended or you can give up um, I can't even remember what it's called now but the one that gives you a 10% less damage taken from AA and honestly if you were going to give up one of those skills it would probably be that one that's probably the less useful one although over the course of the battle you know 10% less damage might make enough difference but I don't I'm not enough of a hardcore numbers head to know for sure but honestly thinking about it yeah the 5% extra fire chance is probably worth the trade off of taking 10% more damage so at this point I'm trying to hunt for the Shima, their second remaining destroyer. Uh, we're doing alright so far in this game, I mean the the team was okay. Uh, it's, just, it's one of those ships, it's hard to really make a difference in terms of damage. You're more going to make a difference in terms of spotting, lighting up enemy destroyers, maybe picking off low health targets. But in terms of decisive strikes against enemies, I mean, if you land a good hit with the dive bombers, you can do around 12,000. And if you get that full spread, then you will probably set a fire as well. But the problem is, of course, you've then got to fly your next squad of dive bombers all the way there. Cause the, the attack planes are not good for setting fires. They really are. They only have like a 9% chance with the rockets. I've not had a lot of success with them. They're mainly for picking on destroyers and spotting for doing damage to ships it, it really is these dive bombers it becomes incredibly important that you can serve them now, I probably could have gone back for the Shima but at this point I, I was thinking oh, my damage isn't that good I really want to you know get a bit more at this point my greed got the better of me and so instead of taking out another attack squad and once again going for the Shima which is gonna cost one of our ships their life later on so you know this was not the right call in retrospect but instead I've gone for this Musashi and I've not done the safety drop this time because the Musashi is separated enough uh, again from from their allies and uh, if I can get the fire well somebody else has got a fire if I get a fire as well maybe it'll stick 
and it looks like it will. And rather than do that big wide circle needed to get round back on target, I'm actually going to make the second drop on the Sovetsky Soyuz. And this will be a rare occasion when I've taken up the dive bombers and managed to get all four planes to drop. And as a bonus, I even got the kill. Even though it was only about seven, eight, eight thousand damage. What was that? Yes, eight thousand damage. Eight and a bit. So here we go. One of my planes is turning orange, but make the drop. You'll note with the amount of lead you need with those uh, cluster bombs. Yeah, it's really hard to destroys, especially you, you. You can't hit unless you get very lucky. And even a lot of cruisers, it's extremely easy for them to just turn a little bit as you're making a, your a, approach, and that will throw things off completely. They are absolutely the most used against battleships. And if you get a hit against the carrier, you can, you know, like a nice big flat target, you can usually get your full 11, 12k hit. So back to the Shima again, having ninjaed a kill. Although it, it really was going to be down to RNG, whether it was my fire or somebody else's fire that, that killed that Musashi. But still, it's nice to have gotten a kill, and we are comfortably pulling ahead in terms of map control and everything else. But there we go, the Shima has killed that Friedrich Dragosa. So uh, yeah, that, that FDG was the unfortunate victim of my uh, greed to do some damage. <laughs> So that, that wasn't particularly good team play on my part, but the direction of the torps at least gave me a bead on where that Shima was, and as it turns out, yeah, they're going for the cap, which is otherwise undefended, because everyone else is now pulling towards the middle. But I'm close enough, and these rocket planes will at least do enough damage against um, this uh, Shima that, uh, yeah, I can just hopefully get the kill on them and they won't have torpedoes immediately available because I'm about to get spotted by them very shortly. So unfortunately no hits from that blind strike but I've nearly got a full squad of rocket planes to go again already. I have had games especially early on where I, I wasn't yet in that habit of making those drops uh, of just getting almost deplaned by the end of a game. And, uh, you, I mean, you really can't treat it like a, a plane with any decent levels of, of plane reserves. You have to be so cautious. Especially what I've been doing at the start of matches is being very cautious, making those drops, and only taking my, you know, single dive bomber squad and my two-thirds uh, plane squad, uh, my, my attack plane squad for scouting. And then later in the game, when we're getting down to more damaged targets, at that point, taking the riskier drops using the full squads because that's when it becomes more useful to have that available whereas if you're throwing your planes away early on you're going to run out very quickly I, I learned this the hard way I, I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to carriers but you know I'm not completely terrible at the new new style carriers I always have a vague handle of, of what's going on so a fire set by the rocket planes looks like it's actually going to take out that Shima so I'm going to keep these guys close just in case they're able to put it out at the last minute. Don't want to get complacent. But nope, the fire did the job. That's my second kill. And I'm up to a whopping 66,000 damage. Woo! And honestly, if I had gone after that Shima earlier, I'd probably have lower damage around about now. This game actually might have ended up with lower damage. But as it's turned out, that... Free Drift across a dying to the Shima hasn't affected the outcome of the game especially. But in a tighter situation it could have. So yeah, that was definitely not the right call at that particular moment. So there's only a couple of ships left. The Montana and that Zhao, who's still looking fairly healthy. I'm trying to line up here for the Montana, but then I realised that no, he's he's dead. So let's angle away and try and line up for the Zhao. And hope they don't maneuver too much. And ideally, I would have rocket planes to maybe have a bit better chance of doing damage. But as you can see, it starts to turn, and you you cannot maneuver enough to get an adequate 
coverage at that point. So I get some damage. It wasn't a completely wasted drop, but it ended up straddling the ship in a rather inefficient way. So we're about um, done with this, just about. Uh, there's the Zhao and the carrier left, but uh, yeah, we're, we get, we're so close on points, we're going to end up winning this on points before we uh, actually, you know, see them again. I don't know why I was struggling for words there, that wasn't a complicated concept. One other thing to point out actually is um, uh, the fighters, the fighters on this, I, th I can't remember if they... Do they do more damage or something? I can't remember. You get the extra fighter consumable. Which is, I guess, to make up the fact that you don't have the uh, the third type of attack planes. But it does mean that you have overall fewer fighters. Which, again, is a disadvantage. So, yeah. It's just laden with disadvantages, this. So that's it for that game. I apparently forgot to save the score screens even though I recorded it as I was playing it because I am a professional and I totally know what I'm doing. But you could see from the in-game counter what the final damage was. And it, that was about average. I mean, better players than me will be able to get higher averages out of it. But certainly compared to the other tier 8 carriers I've played, even the implacable is honestly better than this and that's nobody's particular favorite among the tier 8 carriers and uh, as I said earlier I, I consider the Graf Zeppelin to be better than this and the Graf Zeppelin is on the weak side undoubtedly so it's not unplayably bad but it is certainly the worst of the tier 8 carriers and the disadvantages that it has been given are in my opinion outweighed by the things they tried to give it to counterbalance those disadvantages so in, in terms of damage dealing it's definitely weaker than the rest you have a less capability of air control because you have less fighters available because of the small squad sizes it limits the amount of damage you can do on any one strike and uh, between that and having to be so careful about your planes you know there are some games where you will be able to do very little because it'll be just big blobs of higher tier AA and there's not much you can do about it without throwing all of your planes away because you just you, you don't have the plentiful reserves that the Kaga has for example and, and given that you have these small squad sizes if it was going to have any kind of gimmick on top of everything it does already with the higher plane xp and the decent plane speed then it would be to give it plentiful plane reserves but no it doesn't have that so that makes it a rather prickly proposition personally if i was going to recommend a premium royal navy carrier well we have one at tier six which is actually kind of fun to play arc royal is a really nice well-placed, reasonably balanced premium carrier. And this isn't. This is a complete pain in the butt. I think you would have to be some kind of masochist to garner any special enjoyment from it. But some people do enjoy a challenge. It's just this particular challenge comes with a tier 8 premium price tag. And I think for most people it is absolutely not going to be worth that at all. Not even slightly. Hopefully it will get buffed at some point, hopefully, I guess we'll see, but for now, if you're after a tier 8 premium carrier, there are definitely better options available. If you're after a World Navy premium carrier, there's a better option available, which has much kinder matchmaking. I'd rather have the Ark Royal in a tier 8 game than this thing in a tier 10 game. So that is it for my look at the Indomitable. It's pretty disappointing, but the good news is, if you see one on the enemy team, you're not going to have to be all that worried about it. So hopefully you found this video useful and interesting, and if you did, you can do all the usual things down underneath it, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more.